people of Earth. We have come to upgrade your cosmic consciousness. DNA activation ready. In three, two, one. Hi, welcome to Q&A on Breakthrough Leadership. I'm Craig Anderson. And I'm Lou Quinto. Today's topic is facilitating meetings. Now, Lou's first rule of meetings is don't even have the meeting. No, no meetings. But it's hard to go through a world where you don't have any meetings, but what's important is to make those meetings effective. And today we're going to talk about the importance of facilitating those meetings so you can have a more successful time that doesn't waste the time of everyone else in the room. So we'll be covering three areas. One, why you need a facilitator for your meetings. Two, how to design a good agenda. And three, the importance of using a variety of facilitation tools as you go through your meetings. So Lou, why don't you tee us up on why you need a facilitator? Oh, well, obviously you need someone to control the meeting. There's no question about that. Most mm -hmm. meetings, usually the person who calls the meeting is the person who is the one who is leading the conversation. It's usually done from a seated, seated position in many instances. There's yeah. no real facilitation there. And you really, if you've got a meeting where there's a problem that needs to be solved or a decision that needs to be made, a plan that needs to be created, you need someone who is actually controlling it. And they need to stand up in front of the room and they need to actually run the room as they, as they would an operation. Uh, because that's technically what it is. Uh, and so what you need to do, and one of the points that I always make is that uh, if you are the person calling the meeting, you shouldn't be the person standing in the front of the room with the pen. You need to give that pen to somebody else to let them be the facilitator. Because Craig, what happens is, is that when people are talking and they're making suggestions, we tend, if we are the person who owns the problem or owns the decision, what we end up doing sometimes is we filter things out because immediately in our mind, we disagree with it because we've got some sort of bias. Uh, right. We've all got, and we've talked about this in decision making, that gut feeling. Yeah. Well, when someone brings up a comment or a suggestion, we immediately, the gut talks to us real quickly and says, nope, that doesn't sound like a good idea. And therefore, then we don't record it. We don't write it down. We just dismiss it. We don't do it in a, in a rough way. We could say, okay, does anyone else have any ideas? And we just skip over to the next idea. And it happens all the time. And so when I'm coaching execs, what I always tell them is that if it's your problem, don't be the person in the front of the room. You need to let somebody else run the meeting. You need to sit back and you need to relax and listen to what people are saying. Going back to one of the things that we said, listen first, yeah. you know, then talk. And when you listen, you learn more. So you may learn more about your problem. So a facilitator will help you with that. No, I, I totally agree. I actually, when I would run my strategy meetings, you know, a couple times a year, it was always really important to bring in, and I actually brought in my coach to actually help us facilitate the meeting. Mm -hmm. And she would do a great job keeping us on track, kind of taking away judgment. Right. Right. Yeah. To talk about. Um, so, you know, so I was still free to free for you to say, hey, there's no stupid ideas except that idea you just had. Uh, but it was nice to have someone to kind of stand back from it mm -hmm. and help keep us moving, help keep us on time, help us when we were straying sure. from the topic and going down rabbit holes. So I thought it was, it was a great way for us to run more successful meetings. I actually have a client, Lou, who has a pretty big board and a very important board meeting coming up, I think, in January or February. And for the first time, she's actually hired a facilitator to come in yeah and run that very important board meeting for her so she can actually participate and engage in the right. meeting as opposed to trying to run it, trying to stay on track of what's going on and, and not really having the kind of the fulfilling experience she needs in what is a very important meeting for her. So right. I, you know, we really, you know, for meetings and really even meetings that aren't too critical, but for very important meetings without a doubt, having a facilitator there to keep you on track is, is a key piece for success. And it doesn't need to be a paid facilitator. It could be just another member of the team. Sure. Because one of the things you have to remember is that there's that group think peer pressure that comes into yeah. place. If you're the, the person with the highest title in the room and you've got the marker in front of the room, people are only going to naturally tell you what they think you want to hear. Right. And we've covered that before in previous episodes. Yeah. Yeah. So the second thing we're going to talk about is, well, a good facilitator needs to have a good agenda. So Craig, you sort of alluded to having a good agenda, keeping people yeah. on track and everything. We talked about it in meetings. Mm -hmm. Any meeting you have, you need to have a written agenda. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, how much more can we beat that horse? Well, I think you have to kind of beat the horse because even as much as no, I... No offense, this yeah. is not an animal yeah. cruelty type of situation. No, not, absolutely <laughs> not. But it is, it is an important... It's hard to remember these tips kind of in the heat of things. Right. And so you throw together a meeting, you don't have an agenda, and you're kind of all over the place. 
So I think it's really good to kind of continue to bring the point home of design an agenda for your meeting, whether that is, you know, a town hall meeting or a strategy meeting, right. or, you know, we've got a problem and we've got to fix it meeting. It's important to have an agenda, like what are the things we have to cover? What are we trying to get out of it? Who do we need in the meeting? Mm -hmm. How much time are we going to allocate so that we don't lose track of our larger objective for the meeting? Right. So I actually think it's, as much as we talk about having a good agenda, I think it's critical to make sure we continue to remind people to put together a great agenda yeah, for their meeting. Yeah. And, and with that agenda, obviously for a facilitator to keep on track, uh, I believe there should yeah. be time limits on each agenda topic that you're talking about. So that this way you're gonna, you're gonna spend 20 minutes on this, 15 minutes on this, and it, it keeps the group moving. And, yeah. and that's what a good facilitator does. A good facilitator keeps the group moving and when to prevent them from going down those rabbit holes, one of the things that, you know, every, well, I won't say every group because I've introduced it before and a lot of people don't know about it, but having that parking lot uh, on the side where you yeah. take a, a, a whiteboard, a section of the whiteboard or a flip chart paper, stick it on the wall, and when someone brings up a topic that really doesn't pertain to what you're talking about, a good facilitator will know, okay, well, I'm going to capture that, put it on the wall so that you know we don't forget about it, and then right. move forward from there. And and that's something that uh, we, we don't use enough of, and we allow groups... Of, a, a, someone who's not a good facilitator will allow groups to, to run down, as you call them, those rabbit holes. Oh, yeah. 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 And I think it's the other piece I'd just add is there's probably a healthy amount of eye rolling just then when we were talking about, you know, time limits for topics, having a strict agenda. And I get it. I totally get it. But, you know, what I would encourage everybody to do is actually try it, do it, do it a, several times for meetings, and you're going to see what a difference it makes sure. in how you're developing your meetings. Uh, there's a reason people talk about it, and there's a reason so many meetings are bad because most people don't really do it. Right. So, uh, you know, I would encourage all of our viewers to give that a try for like a month and see how much it changes the complex right. of your meetings. Yeah. So, so, and that leads us to our next topic, using a variety of facilitation tools. Uh, with something I've done for the last 30 years is also work with companies where I'm that facilitator that gets yeah. hired to come in and to, to work with, with a group or a team. And to just have people sitting around the table is not a good facilitator. What you need to do is you make, need to make sure that you use a variety of different tools available to you. Right. Uh, we did an episode on brainstorming. Brainstorming is a tool that you can use uh, in a particular meeting at, that you're looking for new suggestions or new ideas, the way to do things, uh, you should always, no matter what, record information. So the whiteboard right. becomes a facilitation tool. Even if you have just flip chart, get the flip chart, get some masking tape. If you didn't use the super dupy, super duper sticky, you know, yeah, on the yeah, wall uh, yeah. flip charts uh, made by 3M. Uh, find ways to do that. Sticky notes. You can use sticky notes to do that, to be able to look at process improvement, to be able right. to map a process out. Use PowerPoint uh, presentations in order to demonstrate uh, processes, visuals. We tend to be a society that 55% of all communication is nonverbal. And so if you can take and you can implement those into your facilitation, because we all get information at different intervals. And so something may be said, but my mind is still processing something that was said about, you know, three minutes ago, right. and I miss what gets said. If it's not captured on a board, then I'm not, it's not going to get into my head. And so that's why it's important that we capture everything. And those are some of the facilitation tools, along with small group activities, where you let the group take the problem, the decision, whatever it is you have, and let them work together in small groups and put together their information or their suggestions and then come together as a whole group to be able to do that. Right. So it's more facilitation tools are more than just sitting around the table gnawing at the problem or the decision. Yeah, and I just because I had quite an expression when you said bring PowerPoints into the meetings, um, I was glad that you then said visuals and right. to try and help facilitate right. it because the last thing we need is more long, painful PowerPoints in meetings right. that we all have to sit and listen to people read from. Uh, so, but if it's a visual of a process to help yeah. people get on board, you know, I'm all in with a that. A visual of a product, a piece right. of machinery, things like that. It's great when everybody's sitting in the room can see the same thing yeah. because my mind may think something different than your mind or I don't pick something up that you know about in a particular thing. So whenever you have a, any visual is yeah. incredible when you have to make a solve a problem or make a decision. Well, and we've talked about this before, but I would consider a facilitation tool having rules, right? Road yeah. rules for your meeting, you know, what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. Um, you know, I will always fall back to my favorite meeting rule that I had, which was respectful cursing. Yeah. Uh, but it's important to have those rules to go through so everybody kind of stays on track. 
Uh, and, you know, a lot of the things you said, you know, I always enjoyed a meeting, especially if it's a brainstorming strategy type meeting right. where you have kind of the, the, the design thinking type session yeah. where you have the post-it notes and you get all those ideas up there and pull some of that judgment out of the room. Right. Uh, so people don't do things like my earlier eye roll. And, you know, you can get those all up there, get those kind of independent from, you know, who said it and get it all up there on the paper. So there, I think bringing tools in to kind of track what's going on. And then the other one you mentioned is, is really have, in addition to a facilitator, make sure someone is responsible for taking notes. Yeah. Because if you, if you don't have notes, if people are going to walk away from that meeting and have different interpretations of what the conclusions were and what information was shared. So a lot of times if you can have somebody as a designated note taker, I think that's another facilitation yeah. tool that's important yeah. for people to use. So, so our key takeaways for today. Uh, one of my key takeaways, and I think I've done this in the previous episode where I've just listed the three points that we've covered, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. it's easy. Uh, you need a facilitator. Mm -hmm. If you've got a meeting where you're solving a problem, making a decision that has a significant impact, you're the person who owns the problem, who owns the decision. You should not be the person in the front of the room with the pen. You need to give that pen to somebody else, whether it's another team member, whether it's someone from the outside that comes in. You need a facilitator who can facilitate the group because if you don't, your mind's racing, you're worried about the agenda, you're worried about who's talking, who's saying things. You're juggling a whole bunch of balls at the same time, plus you're trying to solve your problem. Right. So you need that facilitator. Yeah, and I think you said something that I was important, which is you don't need a paid facilitator. No. Uh, there might be someone on your team who maybe isn't involved in the issue, but who's really good at kind of keeping things on track. You know, so find those people in the organization and get those people to the table to help you get these meetings facilitated. So I think that was kind of my key takeaway today. Yeah. Well, great. Well, hey, thanks for watching our episode today. If you like what you saw, please like it, subscribe, share it with your friends, especially people you know who run really poor meetings. Just kind of passive aggressively slide this out there in front of them. So uh, thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time. I'm Craig Anderson. And I'm Lou Quinto.